bus is goosed, buddy. That's why the fan ain't working. Oof, we've all been there, haven't we? When your air conditioning doesn't work. Well, this poor guy, blower motor doesn't work, never mind the air conditioning. It's hot at the moment in Finland. This guy came to me a couple of days ago. He'd been to another garage, a so-called expert. Welcome to Prestige Car Diagnostics. Yeah. And the expert said it had a CAN bus failure, and that's why the blower motor wasn't working. No, it wasn't. It took me 15 minutes to diagnose it. I'm making a video really to show people who don't know anything about fault finding just how easy it is to diagnose a simple blower motor. Now, I'm not going to show replacing the motor. There's actually a video on my channel on how to do that on an F10. This one is just simply going to be about how the system works, have a look at a small diagram I made, and how you can test it. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. By the end of this video, you'll be able to diagnose your very own blower motor, no matter what car it is. So it's come to me this car, other garages says it's got a CAN bus fault. CAN bus fault, are you kidding me or what? So no, it's not a CAN bus fault, it's a simple blower output failure. Dead easy, it's done what? 180,000 kilometers, car's 2015. It's nine year old car, of course it's gonna have worn brushes in the motor, right? Simple. So let's go ahead, let's whack the wiring diagram on. I'll give you another reminder in a bit. And then let's just diagnose this damn thing in, it's here for half a day. Well, as you can see, there is no CAN bus faults, they're the only two faults in the car, and it's the output stage on the load side of it, and it's detected that as a fault. So, now you know what it is, let's continue the troubleshooting and forget about the stupid CAN bus nonsense. You saw the fault codes, and it basically is saying it's the blower output stage. Well, the blowers aren't doing a damn thing, it's exactly what the fault code's saying. So I don't know why they're moaning about the CAN bus, because that's just complete nonsense, isn't it? Let's be honest, right? Can I see here in the back there, there's the rear motor, totally different motor, not the same as the front motor, completely different. Of course it's working because it has a different circuit, yeah? So, all we need to do is simply check we've got voltage, the fuse hasn't blown, and we're going to look at the blower stage. Let's now look at the wiring diagram. So, the way the system works, essentially, is quite a straightforward system. You have the air conditioning control unit on some cars it's remote but on this particular car it's the panel itself and it's called the ICA and it's basically German I'm not going to translate it because I don't know how something about climb climate or something that's climber okay and basically that's what that is so that's the panel that we saw in the video which was working basically now when I was talking about CAN bus there is a K can here I haven't put where it goes to because it's not applicable for this fault find but what the point I'm making is if there was a CAN bus fault with this panel, it would probably still light up like we saw in the video and work, but there would be no messaging being transmitted to it or from it. And this is what our our mate Jack, our dodgy mechanic, has said to the customer, that you've got a problem here with the CAN bus. Well, as we can see, if we go back over to this diagram, we don't have any CAN bus according to the blower motor final stage part of it. So... All we have from the ICA control panel to control the final stage unit, which was the, basically, it's a heater resistor, but it's a more modern variant with a microprocessor. You have a LIN line. It's a single wire. And I've put here that it's a control line. The FSU is the final stage unit, which I'll be showing you again on the video as we do the testing. This is the bit that takes the LIN command, and it then activates um, a pulse width modulated duty cycle on the ground. But before we go into that, let's look at the power supply. We have a single fuse from the junction box. It's called a JBBF in the F series. Other cars, it can be a JBE. On newer BMWs, it can be a FEM or a BDC module. But on this particular car, the F10, it's called a JBBF junction box. So we just have a 12 volt power supply directly to the final stage unit. The final stage unit is grounded to the chassis. And that's all it needs. It has a power here. It has a ground here and it has a LIN to control it or to give it the commands, what it needs to do. This unit receiving the command from the LIN, the messaging, always has a permanent 12 volt to the blower motor. This never ever changes. It's a permanent live. 
That's what you need to see. It doesn't vary that. What it actually does, which is a bit unusual, is it always has around one volts on this line. And the maximum it'll have, I think, is between six and eight volts. I've put eight volts there. I wasn't so sure. But we'll see that later on in the video. And the reason it has this, which you might find very, very strange, is what it does, it changes the resistance of the ground by adding voltage. Now, it doesn't short out. The reason it doesn't short out is it's got a microprocessor control. It knows what it's doing. And this motor then, I'll always have its 12 volts, but to go in order to go maximum speed and spin maximum speed, it needs a really good ground here for the motor because obviously a bad ground, like resistance on the ground in that sense, will slow the motor down. And if you have a wire with a bad resistance on it to a component, to, to something like a control unit uh, or something like that, once it gets to a certain voltage, it'll cut out. It can be useful, though, when you can control the resistance on the ground, as in this pulse width modulated duty cycle, because then we can use that to slow down the motor by adding a resistance to reduce the ground, to make the motor less efficient. And that is what you'll see as we go later on into the video. Now, older systems, of course, they used to use huge big resistors separately and they would get very, very hot. This now is all solid state. It's much better. But again, the older systems use the same principle. And of course, on other things, you can actually have a duty cycle 12 volt. It would work in my eyes exactly the same way. Don't know why they do it on the ground, but that's how they do it. So that's the, that's the system. It's as simple as that. So we have no problem with CAN because we don't have any CAN fault codes. So we forget this side of the circuit. Just get rid of that. You don't need to worry about that. We don't really need to worry about the LIN because, again, if you have a LIN fault, guess what? You'll have a message LIN. You'll have something like something like LIN slave missing. This is the LIN slave. This is the LIN master. And remember, this LIN bus does actually go to things like the flap control motors, so this same LIN will be used to send messages to flap motors. So if you have a problem here, you'll probably have a problem with your flap motors if the brake was sort of here and not further down the line. So you can forget literally all of that part of the diagram. Then all we did, and what you'll see further in the video, is we took a voltage reading here, we had it, we had a ground. That's it. We, we measured a LIN signal, a good LIN signal there. So this unit has all three things it needs to work. That leaves only two wires or a blower motor. It's as simple as that, isn't it? We have 12 volts and we have a ground varying resistance as the motor speed increases and decreases. On this particular car, it switched it off for safety reasons. But as you'll see towards the end of the video with the new motor installed, we'll actually see this in operation. So let's get down to that. Now you understand how the system works and let's carry on our troubleshooting. So with the motor disconnected, that's the harness side of the motor there. And we're just measuring back into the motor. We've got 1.2 kilo ohms. Too much. It should be 2.7 ohms roughly. So you know you've got a knackered brush pack because that's the motor disconnected and you're just measuring across the brushes. So it's not good enough, is it? We've got a knackered motor. So let's try the new motor, which I ended up fitting to the vehicle. And you'll see, as I said, 2.7 ohms. Great, done. So your fault fan is done. It weren't a Campbell's fault like that con man tried to say to our customer, which is why I'm glad the customer came to us and didn't stick with that guy because he would have been up hiding to nothing doing that one. So if you're new to fault finding or you're not so sure, I'll just show you how to troubleshoot it just in case you have got a good motor. Well, here I am at the main connector, the main power supply, and you've got a ground, you've got 12 volts, as you can see, and that's powering the final stage unit or the heater resistor, computerized heater resistor, let's call it. Then we can check, have we got a LIN bus? Well, we don't need to worry about what messaging is on the LIN. We just need to know, have we got a signal? We've got a signal, it's good enough in my eyes. The other end of the wire we just checked, we're going to now check it again to make sure we haven't got resistance in that short harness. Probably won't have, but we should check anyway, right? We'll have 12 volts as we had at the other side of it, and then we need to check the other side of it. We should have a ground. That's the power supply, remember, to the final stage unit, which is the unit I'm now checking. All three things are in place. Now we just need to look at the motor while it's connected to the FSU. Voltage is okay, but what's this? Let's go on the ground. That's not quite good really, we should have 12 volts on there. Why should we have 12 volts? Well, when the system switched off, both wires are 12 volts. It's an electronic circuit, that's how it works. And when everything's switched off, and you have 12 on both wires, 12 volts on both wires ain't gonna actuate a motor, is it? 
Why they do that, I don't know, but that's how it works. If we disconnect that, essentially, take it away, and we measure the final stage unit, not connected, we see we have a nice ground at the FSU, and we have 14 volts. And that, what you saw when it was plugged in, as you'll see later on as we do a bit more testing with the new motor, you'll see is incorrect. So here's the new motor all hooked up and I'm going to show you this voltage drop. You see there was a bit of a voltage on there, 12 volts. Well that's normal when the system switched off, it's 12 volts on both lines. And you can see it's dropping there. So that's the speed now, so that's kind of like full speed. It's kind of just hovering just around 2 volts. And then any sort of more voltage up to I think around 8 volts, that is the slower speed. And that's the varying, I'm in the car now adjusting that. And that's what I was talking about on the video. And then when it's completely switched off, you have just 12 volts. And then what we can do, we can look at the um, the duty cycle now with the Power Probe Maestro. And we're just measuring that ground duty cycle, what we've just seen, but we saw it in like the voltage form. There was a 60 or 70 percent there. And then it's going right the way down and right the way down. And that voltage you've just seen, that's the same voltage, but expressed as a duty cycle value. So that's how the system works, it's really simple and we don't need to do any of this but if you do have an issue and it isn't the motor then this is useful because you know how the system works now don't you? So you can crack on and diagnose your own fan, it's as simple as that. So that's about all you need to do really. So in the end it just needs a blower motor doesn't it, you know. So why on earth these people said it's got a canvas problem, it's took me 15 minutes. 10 minutes to strip it and 5 minutes to diagnose it. And we've pull it on the bench, we just we'll change that motor today. It's this is what I'm up against all the time. It's a nightmare. And it's getting harder. It's getting harder this job. Just put the old bonnet struck back in. I'm just gonna show you a tool I made about four years ago. If you've not got one, make one. Like this, an adjustable bonnet shibula. And it's a bit like what you have Mercedes, the bonnet goes straight up. BMW don't do that, you have to take the struts off as you've just seen there and put that on. But I made this, cost me about three quid. Some old, old, oh, oh knackered ones just fell off. Some old knackered uh, bonnet lifters. These with pedestrian protection, you have to change them every couple of years. So we just sawed the end off, made a thread. Job done. There's the thread there, I made that thread in it. Great that, isn't it? Bit of tubing, everyone's happy. Makes the job 100 times easier. Remember that.